Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, in honor of Pagua coming up at the end of the week, I'm gonna be sharing my recipe for hard goat stone. Now basically what this dish is, it's a dessert and it resembles like a hard gulab jamun or like a matai ball. And this recipe was shared with me by my friend Aaron. We came up with a little recipe together to share with you guys. This is not really a dish that is made anymore. Um, many people don't know about it. If you do know about it, then go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to learn how to make it, please keep on watching. As I was saying before, this dough really is similar to making gulab jamun. It's just a little bit different. All I'm doing is putting in some all-purpose flour as well as some milk powder into my bowl. And then I'm going to go in with my custard powder. You know when we make matai as well, we add in that custard powder just to make it more rich and more soft. And at this point, I'm going to go in with some spices. I'm going in with some freshly ground elaichi or cardamom. And I'm also going to go in with some freshly grated nutmeg. And then you're just going to combine all of your dried ingredients really well until everything's incorporated. And at this point, I'm going to go in with some softened butter. I'm using unsalted butter today because I prefer that taste over the salted butter, but you can use whatever kind of butter that you wish. And I'm just going to mix it in really well until I get like a fine breadcrumb texture. And once that butter is mixed in really well, you're going to start to stream in some evaporated milk. Now, if you don't want to use evaporated milk, you can also use some whole milk, but I highly recommend using a milk that has a higher fat content. So this way it binds it really well. Now I'm going to keep on mixing until I get a nice semi-soft dough, almost like if you were making any type of matai or if you were making a sada roti or oil roti dough. And after you mix in your evaporated milk, you're going to end up with a really nice soft dough such as this. Now remember, you need to make this dough soft enough because we're rolling them into balls. And if the dough is not soft enough, then when you're rolling them into balls, they will not be smooth and they'll have very cracked and ragged edges. I would say that I used about half of that can of evaporated milk, but honestly, you might use a little more and you might use a little less, just depending on how dry your dried ingredients were. Now, as usual, all of the ingredients and the measurements will be in the description box down below. And once you get your dough all mixed up, I recommend that you allow that dough to rest for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes, just so any of those glutens that we had formed can relax. Once they rest for that 10 to 15 minutes, you can start rolling it into balls. Now I went ahead and I rolled them into about tablespoon sized balls. You can make them bigger or you can make them smaller just as per your own preferences. And as you're rolling them into balls, you have to make sure that you get them as smooth as possible. If they're not smooth enough, then what happens is when they go into the oil, they will start to crack a little bit. And when you toss them up in the sugar syrup later on, they will crack and break up and it will not be pretty at all. I've gotten all of the balls of dough rolled out and at this point it is time to fry. So I have a pan of canola oil that's been preheating on a medium heat for a few minutes and once you notice that it is hot you can start to drop in the balls one by one. Now I recommend you do this in batches so this way you do not overcrowd the pan and you have to make sure that the oil is not too hot because if it's too hot they will overcook on the outside and they will not be done on the inside. And as you're frying these, you just want to go ahead and keep moving them around with the back of your spoon. That's just going to allow them to get a really nice, even golden brown coating all over. And after about three minutes of frying, you're going to remove them from the hot oil and lay them on a plate that you've lined with a paper towel. What that's going to do is it's going to drain off any excess oil. And at this point, I'm just going to continue frying the rest of my batches of this goat stone or the hard gulab jamun. Now once you get all of the balls fried off, you're going to start to make your pog or the sugar syrup that's going to coat the outside. So in a little saucepan, I'm going in with my water and I'm also going to go in with my sugar. I'm using granulated sugar today, but if you wanted to, you could use brown sugar for this recipe as well. I also added in a little bit of ground elaichi or cardamom just because I really like that flavor. If you wanted to omit it, you could omit it though. So I'm going to continue to cook this on about a medium to medium high heat. I'm going to wait for it to come to a boil and once it comes up to a boil, it'll only take for about five to six minutes on a high heat to boil out. Now you might just want to regulate the heat and cook it a little bit longer if you're new to this because it can overcook or burn very quickly. Now my indication to knowing when the sugar syrup is done is that after a while you're going to see a lot of fine or small bubbles all over the top of the sugar syrup. So at that point, once you see that it's nice and thick, you're just gonna test out a little batch in a bowl. So I take a little bowl, a couple of pieces of the thing that I'm gonna be coating with the sugar, and I toss it around. If I see that it starts to form a little bit of a cloudiness on the spoon, which you guys are seeing right here, then I know the sugar syrup is done. And once you see that the sugar syrup is done cooking, you're gonna pour them all over the hard gold stones or the hard gold of jamun, and you're gonna keep on tossing it up until the sugar syrup forms and crystallizes all over the balls. And after about a minute or two, all of that sugar syrup should have formed really well 
and formed a really nice glaze all over the balls. So all you need to do now is shake that bowl around a little bit and by shaking it you're going to break off some of the excess sugar crumbs that have formed and you're going to give it more of an even coating. So as you guys can see that is how quick and simple it is to make goat stones or hard gulab jamun. Now honestly guys I know it's a weird name for a dish like this but honestly they were really really delicious. They were nice and moist in the middle, had a little bit of fluffiness and they were really rich from the milk powder as well as the evaporated milk and the sugary coating on the outside added a really nice crunch. So if you want to try something different for Pagwa this year then go ahead and try out this recipe. If you enjoyed this recipe please don't forget to give it a nice big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet and drop your comments down below and let me know what I should make next. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye everyone!